Now that we've created our smart arrow shape that behaves well when we resize it, we want to combine it together with a, a square box to hold a number and complete our note shape. So we can put these two shapes together, select them both, and then group them. But you'll notice if I drag out a copy here and resize it that things aren't quite behaving correctly. You can see the box on the left is stretching when I stretch the whole shape. Even though the arrowhead point is maintaining a nice shape, the whole shape overall doesn't really quite work. We can sub-select inside the group and resize things, but we don't want to do that every time we resize the, the note shape. So let's do something a little bit more intelligent. So we've got this shape grouped together. Let's open up its shape sheet, and I want to create some parameters that I'm going to use within the arrow and the box to control their size. And I wanted the parameters at the top level of the group because it's more convenient to work with them there if I need to make changes later on. So we'll just right click anywhere in the shape sheet and say choose insert section and I'm going to select user defined cells. These are hidden parameters for developers and users never see them as they do shape data fields. So we've got one row here and I'm going to call it box width to govern the width of the white box on the left. And I'm going to right click anywhere in this section and say insert row to get another row. And I'm going to call that arrow width. Now both of these subshapes have the same height as the group so we don't really need to worry about the height of, the, of them. But you'll notice since this box is square, its width is actually the same as its height. So I'm just going to say the box's width is the height of the group. Now remember, this shape sheet is for the group. And the arrow, the width of the arrow is just whatever is left over. So that means the width of the arrow is the width of the group minus its height. That's all we need to do. So let's close that shape sheet because we don't have a lot of screen real estate to work with. And now I'm going to sub-select the box and open its shape sheet. Did you see how I had the, the handles are just around the box when I sub-selected and they're a little bit lighter? That means I sub-selected it. There's the whole shape and there's the sub-shape within the group. What I want to do is insert again a user-defined cells section and I'll just call this box width like I did before and I'll refer to the group and get its value of its box width cell. And the group is sheet three. And the way I know that is the width of the box and the height of the box and the location of it stored in the pin X and pin Y are all referring to sheet dot three. And since these are subshapes, the default values for positioning and sizing subshapes always come from the group. So they're proportional to the space of the group itself. So I just know that if I start typing sheet dot three, then I hit the exclamation point and start typing user. And another dot you'll see there are those two cells I entered earlier, box width. So let's choose that and hit return. And so now my square, my box, has a reference to that parameter we created for the group earlier. And I want the width of my box to be that. And I'm just going to click down here. So now the width of the, I could have just directly entered sheet.3 user.box width into this formula up here, but it's nice to have matching parameters at the group level and the subshape level. There's some consistency there. And uh, just something I like to do as a, as a convention. You don't have to do that. Another thing that it's helpful that you don't have to do is moving the pin to ease calculation. You can see that uh, the rotation point is in the middle of the shape, but we can move it to the lower left corner by changing the load pin. Let's say zero and zero here. Oops, Hit zero again. And if I go back up to the rotation point, you can see that it's now rotating about the lower left corner. And the reason I've done that now is because now I can make the location within the group also zero, zero. So instead of having all these complicated formulas to locate the position of the shape, I can just say, 
move the local the rotation point or the local pin to the lower left corner then locate the pin within the group at 0 0 and I'm going to write this formula with guard because guard protects users from subselecting and changing that you'll see now that if I subselect the shape I can't move it I can, I can resize the height because I haven't guarded that yet but I can't resize the width so that we could actually go in here and guard that as well. Just type guard with parentheses around it. You can see that sheet.3 height is this, the height of the subshape. And that's pretty standard. So now what happens when we resize our shape? You can see that the box is maintaining the proper size right now, but the arrow isn't. So let's go into the arrow shape I subselected it, right click and show its shape sheet. And we'll enter that, uh, we'll add the user section again. And this time we'll type arrow width. And then we'll refer to the group, which is sheet.3. We'll hit the exclamation point and start typing user dot, and there's the arrow width. So now we've pulled down the value of the group's arrow width cell and we can actually check the value of that by clicking values up here you can see that that should be 3.5 and you look at the, the, the length of the shape it looks like it's one two three four inches long if we take off one half inch that's 3.5 so that looks that looks correct 3.5 inches for the arrow width but you can see the width of the actual arrow right now is only 3.2 inches that's why we have this gap Let's go back to formulas for a second. So we know that the width should refer to this value down here, the width of the arrow. So let's just put that in and we should be done, right? Well, it's not quite done. You can see that the arrow is sticking outside the group a little bit, and that's because the arrow's rotation point is in the middle here. You can see if I do that. So we'd have to do some extra math to say the, the pin x is the width my, the width of the group minus half the width of the arrow which is a little bit complicated we have to do all this math to locate the shape why not push the pin out to the right end like we did with the box so we'll push it to the right and we'll push it to the bottom so now the rotation point is in the right the lower right corner you can see that if i try to rotate the arrow it's now rotating about its lower right corner and now instead of looking at one half of the groups width just take that point five off and put it uh, excuse me put it at zero as well so that the y coordinates are zero and then move this out to the, the end itself right there so now we're lining up the loc pin and the pin of the shape. So the rotation point of the arrow is now in the lower right corner of the arrow shape and the group itself. Just like we did with the box, only we did it in the lower left. You can see the calculations here are much easier than if we'd had to subtract off a bunch of half widths, so it's, so to speak. You can insert your joke there. So I'm just going to guard those just to make it a little bit harder for users to go in and actually accidentally mess those up. And you can see I can't change the width of the arrow and I can't move it. So now what happens if we resize the shape? Well, there you go. Now it's just fine. No matter how long we make it, the box stays square and the arrow takes up the rest of the space. And in fact, if we make it taller, or shorter, or thinner, or thicker. Everything stays in place. So that's how you add smarts, so uh, constant offsets and, and, uh, and smart resizing to shapes that are groups, whereas we before we dealt with the arrow and only done govern, uh, added smart formulas for vertexes, now we know how to do it for whole shapes as well.